Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of the Anything Wrestling Podcast. Thank you once again for joining us. We are back here today with another episode. Uh, it is the Shant and the Kamish. And ladies and gentlemen, we're here to present to you what could be considered one of the gr- not greatest episodes but oh, I'm sorry one of the greatest podcasts ever in uh, wrestling history um, once again my name is the commish I am the advocate legal advisor Instagram runner jack of all trades so to speak um, couple sponsors real quick before we get into the episode today first be sure to follow the anything wrestling podcast one instagram account which will start seeing its debut and build up uh, in the following weeks remember to follow us like and leg drop those pictures that will be posted body slam your comments into each post and let us know what you think about the page um although this particular person is not currently in the wwe this Episode is also brought to you in part by the new and improved, updated, patched up, not really WWE Network, where you can get it for a non negotiable but very reasonable price of only nine ninety nine. Hold on, nine ninety nine. It's not ten dollars. It's not a thousand dollars, and it certainly is not one million dollars. But nine ninety nine. So. There is something that's really been striking a nerve with us yes. recently. And it's hard for us sometimes to always hang out and have a phone ready or a piece of equipment ready to hit the record button and talk about it. Because obviously, at the heat of the moment, a lot of like things fly out yes. that are a lot worthy to say. But sometimes you, you just don't get that opportunity. Yeah. Um. And one of the things that has really sparked a nerve recently is former WWE superstar, uh, now known as the American Nightmare, uh, Cody. Uh, for those of you that know him, as far as fans' perspective goes, this is, we are talking about Cody Garrett Runnels Rhodes. Born Co- Cody Garrett R- uh, Runnels. He is the current executive vice president of All Elite Wrestling, AEW, uh, what some are already claiming is the dominant competitor to the WWE. Heh. <laughs> and alongside with the assistance of his uh, new company, uh, the Young Bucks, there's been a lot of things going on. There's been a lot of jabs and at first we were like yeah you know i get it you're you're trying to like make sure you're securing that hey we're here we're ready we're ready to do it we're gonna prove that we're revolutionizing wrestling all over again yada 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 hibbity hibbity blah 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 blah, whatever and i get it all for the sake of competition why not however when you start when you start sounding like a snarky little punk about things, that's when things start really getting under your nerves as a wrestling fan. I'm not speaking about a WWE fan. I'm speaking in regards as a wrestling fan. Yeah. So this post was let's see, today's the eighth August, five days ago that I saw this. This was on August third that I brought it to your guys' attention, and by you guys I mean the Sean. Dan the Man, and of course, our non-speaking, maybe eventually one day we'll get him on the podcast, uh, Kevin. There is a picture that floated around with a quote from a one American Nightmare saying, It was my own shot, not an AEW shot. I was a huge fan of Triple H. I learned a great deal from Triple H. But when push came to shove, I thought... I was better than most of the people he was putting ahead of me. He didn't see that. So in that moment, there's no greater revenge in the world than success. He's referring to the sludgehammer to the throne. Yes. Which happened at their first 
inaugural event, AEW presents Double or Nothing. The non-inaugural was All, All in. in. All In, yeah. Which happened last year, which was a double presented event by Ring of Honor and promotional yeah. NWA. Had nothing to do with anything he planned out as far as like this is my new company. No, 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 no. You plan through other companies. Yeah. The following is another picture that shows a tweet conversation. Uh, one says, didn't he say, though, that the whole throne thing meant nothing more than he was still a wrestler, not an executive at heart and not a shot at Triple H? Someone subtweeted, I guess, before that. That's what he said directly after the show, at least. Don't know if he spoke the truth or he made up the explanation then or now or both times. Under that, for me, that takes away from his sincerity, which is one of the reasons people say they like him so much. Okay. Here we go. I, I want to ask you a serious question. It's not a survey. It's not something that we usually do for it's not a, a gimmick. AWP. Yeah. This is a serious question to you. Not as a WWE fan. Okay. Not as maybe a fan of AEW. Which I am. But as a fan of wrestling in general. Okay. Knowing what it is. Knowing what professional wrestling has always been said by other people. About, oh, it's not real thing. Or whatever. As a wrestling fan. Do you think his words hold ground? Words? Which words? What he said about the whole, it wasn't a shot at him, but I... Was oh, it's better absolutely than, yes. But I was better than half the talent he was putting over. First of all, let's think about this. For, let's, let's, ironically, let's break it down. Um, this guy comes to the ring. His wife, Brandy, who is also, um, what is she? She's the chief brand officer. Of so the she is to Stephanie McMahon as Cody, ironically, is the Triple H like, yeah. in roles. She literally hands him a sledgehammer. You can guess what that's a nod to. And where does she find said sledgehammer? She didn't walk in with it. Where does Triple H usually find the sledgehammer? Under the ring. Okay. So that checks out. You grab that sledgehammer and you walk up to, surprise, surprise, a throne. What symbol's on the throne? The, the, the patented the cro- cross. It's not a cross, but yeah, it's a cross. That Triple H has worn on his ring gear since forever. Now. Yeah. And you take a shot at that throne and it explodes and falls apart. Everybody cheers. Cool. And then you come in afterwards and go... That's not a shot at him. No, that's just... No, no, no. Bullshit. You have a sledgehammer. The patented weapon Check. that we've all known is his. Check. A throne that he usually comes in on big events. Check. And on the throne itself, his own symbol. Check. If that's not three strikes, I don't know what the hell is. Well, if you want to consider a fourth strike, a fourth strike would be his wife handing him. But because you know Stephanie would always grab that sledgehammer and just slide and, it over to and him. And present it to him. Yes. They made it very presentable. You know? It, it was like, here's the hammer. Here you go. My Here king. I walk up. And wait. Isn't Triple H known as the king of kings? When does Cody ever precede royalty? When has he ever preceded himself as something royal in his whole career? Like, honestly. So, you're saying that you're trying to be your own thing. You and your friends and also the many talent that you've offered bigger deals and creative control and more freedom to still be an independent wrestler for other companies you're not trying your hardest to be up against where you were spawned from originally yeah. you're not trying to take jabs directly at the company that screwed you over quote unquote 
I, I, this was my exact comments. If you want, you can even pull it up where I said, it seems like the default answer or the stock answer for everyone has been just blame Triple H. For everything. For everything. Here's the thing. So let's, I've always been a guy where no matter if it was Roman Reigns, if it was Ronda Rousey, if it was so-and-so, I always gave you both sides. I gave you credit where credit's due and I also criticized. I'm going to do the same thing here. Hats off to Cody. Good job. He's doing something different. He's even said it himself. I'm not going to rehire all former WWE superstars. Because they're unhappy or they're not okay with where they are. Yeah, we're not putting this as WCW 2.0. We are bringing talent from all over the world. And if we happen to catch a couple fish from the big pond, we'll do that. That's fine. So I give you credit where credit's due. Hey... So far, all your shows have been great for the most part. I enjoy them. Great wrestling. You have what Vince described as the blood and guts, which is fine. But, and I get it. Yeah, you know what? In the wrestling business, some people are going to screw you over. Some people are going to tell you you're not good enough. You know, we were just all fair talking about Eric Bischoff and Steve Austin in a room together where I would never really imagine that 20 years back considering this guy fired Steve Austin. Who said he was going to be nothing for wrestling and he's now more than just the icon of the greatest generation of wrestling he's literally a household name yeah like you can play his theme music to non-wrestling fans and they will know who he is however you have somebody whose father Grew up and practically defined the definition of wrestling in the greatest of golden era ever in regards to both the WWF and WCW. I'm not going to say WCW wrestling like we usually do, but this is not a gimmick. It's th- a this is all literally a shoot. Yeah. Your father defined what the company or what the, the sport is. And I get it, you know, like you come from that lineage. Your brother comes from that lineage. I would think him, like his brother, like Dustin. Yeah. He would have the wherewithal to say, hey, you want to do something because you weren't happy with what they were doing to you? Be the guy that doesn't. If you're going for the kill, fine. But be the guy who gives the little guy the opportunity. Yeah. Be the guy who wants to revolutionize it all over again, just like dad. Don't be, and, and I hate to say it this way, don't be the asshole who's crying like a baby and wants the share of the toys that the other guy has. Because honestly, it, 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 it pisses me off so bad when I read that, that it's like, okay, so you didn't take the sledgehammer to the throne. You didn't mock it. You didn't purposely have your wife handed to you. None of that was Triple H ask. No, not at all. BS, man. I call complete BS on all of that. And for you to say, oh, I, I wasn't doing that out of spite. Yes, you were. Here's the thing. Cody says, they were putting people ahead of me. They were pushing people ahead of me. First of all, Cody, you have to understand that there was a whole flock of people who at that time deserved a big push. Let me throw a couple names at you. Cody was one of them. I can remember when he was reaching up for that Money in the Bank briefcase, the whole place was ready to explode. He didn't win it. Damian Sandow did. Another guy where he was about to get that push, but then got buried. Right back to me was another guy. Great momentum, great gimmick, I loved it. Went back down the card. Wade Barrett, great gimmick, could wrestle. Hell, to this day, I keep on saying it, hashtag push Cesaro. The guy is still in there trying to make something work. He took nothing with that feud with Sheamus and they formed the bar. Nobody wanted to see these two guys wrestle. Together. Yes. Or let alone one-on-one against each other. Yes. So here's the thing. I get it. Look. Well, okay. If we can even go as far back as when he started 
In 08, 09. Yeah. Kofi Kingston. How, CM Punk. How full circle did that come? Especially this Sunday at SummerSlam. His own running partner at the time, Ted DiBiase Jr. Yeah. There was so much talent in 08, 09 that it's like, you're a part of it. You're going to get your moment. I get it that some superstars now, or I'm sorry, wrestlers feel like, no, I need to be the guy now. I know I have the talent. I know I can do it. Okay, prove it. I'm sorry that in the WWE, it's a lot harder because they have their way of doing things. What is Vince McMahon always saying? I don't take risks to take risks. I take calculated risks. Yeah. Because I know what will work. Lately, not really. Yeah, yeah. But he's even gone as far as to bring back the two people that can take those calculated risks for him at the right time in Eric Bischoff and Paul Heyman. Yep. You... You have... Okay, if you could define Cody's career in WWE as obviously the son of Dusty Rhodes... Brother that of, brother of Golda slash Dustin Ronalds or Rhodes, dashing Cody Rhodes and Stardust. Yeah. What would you define him in his time in WWE? Looking back, this is going to probably go for a lot of people as underutilized. In the sense of? Not used to his full potential. Because there were a few matches in there, especially when Cody and Dustin were mixing it up with the Shield and having all these tag team matches. They were creating magic. It was great. And you bought into the whole thing of it's the Rose lineage. It's Gold Dust and Cody finally teaming together, finally on the same page. So I get it. Look, we just we had this with John Moxley, the guy like even you and I, just people who aren't wrestlers. We've had jobs where we feel like, you know what, it's it's time to go. It's time for a change. And you move forward. But imagine when you go to your new job, you consistently take jabs at the previous guys. They were this, they were that, they were this, they were that. I should have had this. I should have had that. You're not going to move forward if you consistently go back and take jabs. And here's the thing. This is where I go back to the, the, the default or the stock answer of just blame Triple H. I f- Look, Triple H has stepped on a lot of people. A lot of people. You and I can spend hours talking about just one person in China. You and I can spend hours discussing <clears throat> all the WCW guys that he stepped on. All the WWE guys that he stepped on. The guy has a big ego. He's admitted. He, he's even, he, said, he would always say it in his promos, I'm going to spit on you. I'm going to run through you. And I'm going to get through you. And I'm going to move forward to the next guy. The guy has said it himself. But here's the one problem where I'm like, okay, you have a guy now who started NXT, whose entire job now relays on finding the next crop of talent. Not one crop. That's yes. the key word. Yeah. A grouping of people. It's not, oh, I'm going to find the next me who's going to be as big, if not bigger than me. No. I'm going to find a group of people yeah. who will carry this company to becoming even better than what it has been. And not just male talent anymore, but female talent. Yep. Not just in American talent, but overseas as far as Mexican, as far as Asian, Korean, Korean Japanese, Japanese, Chinese, even Middle Eastern. Australian. Australian. Yep. All talent around the world. This is the same guy who has had by far one of the biggest shovels in the history of WWE. Doing this because he knows everything that he wanted out of the company, it's time to pay back. Yeah. Because just like Cody's father, you take As much as you have to give back at one point in your career. Because that's what will define you as one of the greatest of all time. Right. I get it. 
from what I'm seeing as far as what he's done in WWE, tag team championships and intercontinental championship, and that's it. Everywhere else you've been to, like Ring of Honor or won NWA championships or even before they became their own thing at OVW. You were a heavyweight champion. You were a United States champion. You were, hell, for New Japan, a heavyweight champion or for our United States champion, whatever. You're capable. You have the talent. Your way of giving back I'm going to start my own promotion. Yeah. But you're not giving back in the sense that people are going to respect you for it. Because whether maybe you're, maybe his dad had something where he felt like, oh, you took WCW away from me, like in regards to Vince. Or you did something to my family that I can never forgive as far as my father and my brother go. Yeah. So... I'm going to take something away from you, which is your precious company, and I'm going to be bigger than you. Because honestly, I think I'm that much better than you. The reality is, Miss McMahon has been in business for so long, he knows what he's doing. On his worst day, he makes more than AEW. Yeah, on his worst day. Ticket sales are declining. I get it. You're not getting the matches you want to see. You're not getting the programming you're wanting to see recently. But they are still one of the biggest companies worldwide. The biggest. Ring of Honor, NWA, New, and Japan. Every, New Japan, and every other one. If they had a third of the power, not not the money, not the talent, power that WWE has, I would get it. That they would do everything they can to become the biggest thing in the world. Yeah. All those other companies minus AEW, what do they do? They don't go as big as WWE. They don't go as flashy as WWE. They know their audience. They yeah. know who they have as far as fan perspective goes. But they still give you the one thing you always look forward to seeing. Good action wrestling. Yeah. I get that's what you're trying to do with AEW. But if at the same time you're going to take jabs and do this consistent thing of like, well... I'm still bitter. So I'm going to do this in my pay-per-view. And then I'm going to hold another event. And another. And I'm going to make sure they're always good. But I'm doing it because I'm so spiteful and angry. What are you doing to be better? You're holding on to a grudge that... Is not going to take you anywhere. And I mean, talk about the sweetest form of revenge. I believe that there was a second where WWE was trying to get back Cody Rhodes. They were offering him creative control. They were offering him money. But I don't think he took it. I could be wrong. I know they, they, It was not just to him. Young Bucks. And, they wanted to sign him and the Young Bucks. And when they didn't get those three, they went after Kenny Omega. Yeah. Kenny Omega actually had to think twice. But he was offered the world. Yeah. And it's like, okay, WWE knows that you're smart enough to do this. They, if, if they didn't think he was smart enough to do it, they wouldn't have offered him everything they tried. Yeah. To be like, don't do it. We'll do this for you. We'll give you this. You can have this much money. You can have control of your character for the rest of your freaking career if you want. Yeah. Do you ever see that offered for Roman Reigns, for Seth Rollins, for Charlotte, for Becky? Hell, for Kevin Owens, for Sami Zayn. I'll even mention Baron Corbin, Ronda Rousey, Lacey Evans. Do you see any of them have any of that control? Honestly. 
No. They have one of those few things. They Each. have. I, I would they like have, to think have somewhat some, control some, yeah. of who they are as far as a character and where they're going. They have. They have money, of course. Do they have all of that combined? No. You know why? Because when you're given that much power, either your cup runneth over, or. No one's going to want you around anymore. If you think about it. At one point, let's say all four of them were signed. It'd be like seeing like Shawn Michaels and the Click all over again <laughs> in 96. Or 95 to 96. Yeah. Where you had him and Nash being tag champs. At one point, you had Scott Hall being an Intercontinental Champion. Or you had... Nash be the heavyweight champion and Sean be intercontinental and they're both tag champions. Yeah. Like at that point, I think we would see Cody and Kenny both be heavyweight champions. The Young Bucks be tag champs. And if they even wanted to, they'll have the United States and intercontinental championship. And they'll have creative control of their character. And they will bury whoever they want. They literally were almost handed golden shovels. Yeah. Would they have gone bigger than John Cena or Triple H's? Who knows? But it's... they said no. When they said no, my first thought was fine. You're really going to do this. I am more than happy to welcome this as a fan of wrestling. Because I want to see... All this other talent that's kind of hard to see in these indie wrestling promotions or in these shows that are kind of hard to find on TV. But I want to see you guys be your own thing. Yeah. I want to... If your events are on Saturday, it's cool. I got WWE pay-per-views the following day. Yeah. So I can watch AEW on Saturday, WWE on Sunday. It would be complete. One thing that I wanted to bring up was that not only AEW fans, but it seems like some of the talent, they seem to insinuate this. Like, oh yeah, we're gonna, like, AEW has great programming. They have great content. You know, they're on fire. They're this. First of all, there's always that grand opening buzz that every single company gets where it's like the, the newest kid in town, the newest thing in town. The newest, like the next big thing. Or the, yeah. The, 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 <laughs> to quote yeah. Paul Heyman. Um, the shiniest toy, you know, that just came out. So there's that. Um, and I've said this before. Look, putting on one show every four, five, six months is very easy to do. Putting on a show on a weekly basis and having a pay-per-view follow suit is a completely different story. Which is why when a lot of people ask me, oh, you know, do you think AEW is going to put WWE out of business? Hell no. Like, you haven't even scratched the surface yet. Not even close to. Giving WWE competition? Yes. Absolutely. Finally. And I'm happy for it. I am personally happy. And again, I'm not just a fan of WWE. I'm a fan of AEW. They have sold, they have sold me. Like, yes, I will tune in and I will see your programming. But... Is it with these jabs? Is it with Triple H held me down? This should have happened. That should have happened. Like honestly, I could be wrong. Someone could. You can correct me. Someone who's listening, you know, after this, they can correct me. I the worst shot that that WWE has given to AEW is when Vince said we're not gonna be blood and guts. I think that's the worst that anybody of WWE has ever said about AEW. Stephanie McMahon in a shoot interview, like as she's like traveling, was asked, "What do you think of AEW?" And she just said, "They're they're their own thing. They're doing their own thing." She's not being modest. She's not being like even if she had something or she's bashful not, to not say. Supportive. I am respected that instead of her saying, "Oh, like they can rot in hell," she's like, "They're doing their thing." Even if you know that like she has like a grudge against them, like okay, they're doing their own thing. That's it. I'm not going to sit here and say that, that they're crap or I hope they go out of business or we're going to take them down. Let them do their thing. No problem. But it's like, again, like you and I have talked about this. Spend less time thinking about how you can take a jab at them and then, you know, tell people that you're not taking a jab at them and spend more time just trying to be you. And I feel like that was the problem with WCW. Go back to that comment made by Tony Schiavone about, oh, that'll put butt in seats. Uh -huh. Look what happened. 
you know? So that's Everyone why. immediately tuned in, and then the weight shifted. Yes. So, yeah, because, like, when I saw that, that, that pissed me off. It's like, I knew that he was lying through his teeth, but I'm like, he's doing it in a way where he's kind of covering it up, but kind of letting you figure it out. But then when he put this out, I'm like, like really? On, man. Like, what, like, what more... We're playing this game now? Oh, ironically. We're playing this game now? Like, I... Okay. Is it because... You had... One of the most sophomoric slash... Degenerative of degenerates. Which one of them works for your company, by the way. Say their comments... On one of their biggest shows of the Hall of Fame. Is it because they got under your skin that bad? You want to prove them wrong that you're not. What What did Triple H say? He said at least, like, he, like he'll buy that pissant of a company yeah. just to fire you again. In all honesty, I don't think maybe he can because I don't know how who has the bigger net worth between uh, Tony Khan and Vince McMahon. But if Vince really wanted to try, he could try to buy out AEW. Yeah. If he really wanted to. But he's not. Right now, he has a lot of things that he always has to deal with, including things that we don't need again, even though I was in favor for it at first, even though I'm not now, which is the XFL. XFL. <sighs> Look, I watched the NFL along with wrestling. I can't watch the XFL. I thought about it. I thought I was going to be excited. Oh, I get football after the Super Bowl. Wrong. I, I can care less. <laughs> Especially with what Vince made it the first time. I, I just... I know that with the WWE, they concern themselves with competition always. Yeah. And... Sometimes you hear from these other like podcasts or wrestling shows that, oh, Vince McMahon has had heat with so and so for what they said, or he has issues with this place with what's going on and yada 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 and blah blah blah. If you had one of your own superstars or wrestlers say AEW in a segment called the Electric Chair, do you really think he's that concerned? You think he was that pissed off at Sami Zayn for saying it on live TV? He probably gave him the nod and said, hey, throw it out there one time tonight. Let them have a reaction. Yeah, because it was ironically two nights after their first pay-per-view. Right, yeah. I just... <sighs> Look, mm. we can all agree. Competition is good for everyone. And that seems to be the overall theme is that, you know what? Competition is good. Um, but the, like jumping the gun is what I feel like a lot of people make the mistake of don't jump the gun, focus on you. I think that Chris Jericho, anytime he's had an interview, he's, he's always said, we're focusing on becoming our own thing. Well, at least Chris Jericho is like, that's his mindset. It's like, we're, we're trying to be our own thing. We're trying to give the audience something different. And he said it himself. He's like, look, you could be a WWE fan and you can be an AEW fan. You have a choice. You don't like what's going on here? Tune over here. You don't like what's going on here? Tune back over here. You have the option. It's not you're either you're here or you're here. It's not like anyone's putting a gun to your head and saying, oh, drink Pepsi or I shoot. Drink Coke or I shoot. Yeah. You like both? Go for it. You like one over the other? Fine. No one is pressuring you to stick to one thing. Like, like, like you said. You're sold on them. You want to be a fan of theirs. I do too. Especially with the fact that I get to see talent that, I'm sorry, was underutilized in the WWE. Is now being utilized very well in AEW. Like, best example, Ty Dillinger. That was Originally now known and should have been known as Sean Spears. Better name. The guy... It was such a great talent, but he wasn't given his proper due. He gracefully bowed out, and he made his impact on AEW already. Yes. He's focused on that. Yes. Never have you heard him be like, oh, F the WWE. 
Hell, I get it. Chris Jericho was removed from the original, the new signature, signature. of WWE's because Vince is that angry at him for he's petty. Yeah. And yes, Chris Jericho has a way of being how he is, and every now and then, taking little nods or jabs at the WWE. Well, what I love about Jericho is that he, he comes flat out with it. Yeah. He's not going to sit there and say, well, I didn't really walk out because there was a pro. I just went. Like, no, he'll tell you, like, you know what? I was booked as the second match at WrestleMania 33. We had a proper buildup. I felt like we should have had the, the Universal Championship. We didn't. I was frustrated. I wasn't happy with the direction I was going in. And I was like, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. But he doesn't sit there and go, oh, no, that, that sledgehammer to the throne. If you haven't seen it in his Instagram or listen to his podcast, he still reviews WWE pay-per-view match cards like we do. Of course, he, he's obviously making fun of it because he feels they could do better, which sometimes we even agree with that. Yeah. But he doesn't hold a grudge. He just he tells it like it is. And that's why... As much as Chris Jericho has always found a way to annoy me, he's always found a way to have my respect. Yeah. I'm not saying as as being a podcaster that I know everything about wrestling overall, that I know better than you or better than the other competitive shows on YouTube or on podcasts or on um, SoundCloud or whatever. I don't go around parading that crap. I like to do what I do with my friends because we have an admiration and love for a sport that we can all talk about. And yes, it is a sport. But when you get stupid crap, like what Cody does, it's like, dude, are, did Vince like piss your dad off so bad that you're still that upset about it? Do you have to bait your brother like, they never made you heavyweight champion. They made you a joke. Side with me. Let's take them down together. What are you proving? Like, honestly, what are you proving? Here's the thing. That build-up to Dustin versus Cody was brilliant. It was amazing. There was the jabs again of, I'm going to bury the attitude era. Um, we're going to prove. And, like, Dustin has even said it himself. He's like, look... We, I thought that Cody versus Goldust should have been on a WrestleMania card, and it wasn't. We were given fast lane. The ending was botched. It was got, it got, they got rid of it. And what I love is that if you want to prove something, you do it with actions. You don't do it with, you should have given me the ball. You dropped the ball. You should have given me a push. You go out there and you go, okay, if I want to prove something, I got to take action for it. And if you ask WWE, they might deny it, but Cody versus Dustin was one of the best matches ever. There was emotion. There was, as Vince would say, there was blood and guts. There was everything. More importantly, Dustin still proved that, hey, you know what? Despite the age, despite the injuries, despite the whatever, I can still go. You guys dropped the ball, and they did. I'm not going to sit here and say, no, they didn't. They did. Dustin should have still had a good spot on the show, but instead he was too gimmicky with the filmmaking character of Goldust. So my point is that if you want to prove something, that's how you do it. You go on to a show that you have sold out and you put that match together, Cody versus Dustin, and you put the emotion behind it. You put the blood and guts behind it, as Vince has said, and you prove it to the world that, hey, you guys didn't want to put us on WrestleMania. Watch us. We'll show you what a WrestleMania match could have been. And I'm not sure, but I will take the guess that Vince McMahon sat down and he watched the match. I'm sure he watched the whole event. Or if he, he probably saw particular things about it. And he's like, all right, I can vouch for this. Or I'm okay with it. Or we need to step up our game. Or this is crap that we could do better. Yeah. In wrestling, there's egos. There will always be egos. But my thing is, when you're someone new on the block, you can't... What's the best way to say this? Can't get ahead of yourself? No, there's, there's, there's somebody that... You can't Lex Luger it. 
Because uh, what? He was promised the world. He, he was, thought he was bit above the world. He was almost given the world, if you think, of it, if you think about it. Um, and what happened? I don't know if it's a case of the kid couldn't hang or if it... It didn't work. It just, it, for whatever reason, it didn't work. Um, look, I respect Cody. CM Punk in a promo said, I'm the guy that made walking out look cool. Cody Rhodes made walking out and starting your own company look cool. He's a catalyst. I feel like after Cody, there was a lot of thing of, you know what? People like Cody Rhodes, people like Sandow, people like Ryback, people like Barrett left. I think I need to leave too. And a lot of people did because they weren't happy. And I, I, can, I can respect that. I'm, you know. And they left either because they wanted their careers to keep going, but they wanted control. Yes. Or maybe I'm done. Maybe I can do better it. elsewhere. Yeah. Or I'm tired. Yeah. And I want to go home. So, All respect to whatever you want to do in your career, whatever. And you know what's funny? Because like, there's also the flip side to it. Like, again, big advocate for Damian Sandow. If there's anyone... If, if Cody thought his was bad, think back to every single mini weekly gimmick that Damian Sandow had to endure. But the funny thing is, to this day, he goes, you know what? I was given an opportunity, and no matter what was asked of me, I did it. Period. I've never heard this guy say one better thing about WWE. Now, granted, not every person can be like that. A lot of people, Vince could look at them the wrong way and they can go, this company is not for me, I gotta get out. There is people like that. And there's people you can like give them the worst, you can mankind them. <laughs> and they still will stick around. You put a mask on them, you put an atrocious costume on them, you give them Weird ass theme music. You let them bring back their original gimmick. But they still stick around. Now, um, no, go ahead. My, again, I'm going to go back to this. Some people, you know what? Hey, one, one time too many. Pete, the John Moxies of the world. That's it. I've had enough. I need to get out. I respect that. Go. Do your thing. But I, I feel like with everyone, there's this urgency of like, look, okay, that happened. Let's move forward. I feel like after D, uh, Dean Ambrose, a.k.a. John Moxley, went on the Chris Jericho podcast and let it all out, it was kind of like, okay, I got this out of my system. Cool. Moving forward. Where with Cody, it's like, okay, how can we take a jab now? It's like, bro, just don't do go. what WCW did. Like, there is someone made a mistake back in the day. Look at that, learn from it, and move forward. Don't repeat it. His father was a part of it. Yeah. His father was there to see it. Symposium. So was his brother for seven. <laughs> you no, see I... what we're trying to say? Look, at one point, if you if you still follow John Moxley as far as career is going right now, he's in New Japan. He's in this tournament they're having right now. He's succeeding very well. But after every match, he has a promo. My career was this. My career was going this way. Okay, we get it. But you're still kicking ass, and you're still proving you're one of the greatest wrestlers currently. Yeah. At one point, do you just stop and think, why am I still holding on to this and trying to, like, give them more attention? Because honestly... The first thing I thought after all that thrown BS, I think I want to watch WWE and see where it all went wrong for Cody. I didn't go, oh, I want to go watch another Cody match. I want to watch a Cody match from the WWE. You idiot. Like, I want to see, like, I saw what was when you first fought. Uh, your brother. And I get it. That was the worst. And you were given one of the worst pay-per-views to finally have it on. I will say this. Cody could sit there and complain about the Stardust gimmick. 
but he lived it. Someone who doesn't like a gimmick is not going to live it. He did. This guy would go to interviews dressed as Stardust with full makeup, full gear, talking like him, talking about how there's a galaxy and there's, you know, this and that. So this guy was living the gimmick. He was making the most out of it. I thought it was to an extent entertaining. I thought that, yeah, maybe you should have had a shorter tenure as opposed to this is your weekly thing now. WWE has screwed a lot of talent over. Sometimes I even feel like Triple H is not even to blame, but he gets the blame just because, well, it's the default. You work for them. It's the go-to. Mm. Why not? You know? But seeing as how Triple H has even been the reason why the Ultimate Warriors, the Bruno San Martinos, you know, these guys who Vince was in a feud with, real life altercation with, but Triple H made that decision of, look, it's time to move forward. And Triple H even himself, like he even said, he's like, look, a lot of the times there's misunderstanding. Someone says something, it gets telephoned into something else, it gets to Vince's ear. It's the, like, it just becomes a big misunderstanding. I feel like Triple H has been, has been like the patch. The guy who's trying to patch things up, bring back legends, fixing NXT. Fixing the roster, taking over 205 Live, you know, um, uh, going out with NXT, making NXT UK, giving more opportunity. Not to say he hasn't screwed other people over. Not to say that he's maybe not screwing somebody over right now. Maybe he's holding somebody down. He's probably keeping them under his thumb. But if you want to prove Triple H wrong, if you want to prove Vince wrong, which you already have. Because if they're offering you a big chunk of money and creative control for you to come back, that's a sign of, hey, we screwed up, we want to have you back with more power. If that's not good enough for you, that's fine. That's okay. But when you go on on you know your pay-per-views, sledgehammer to the throne, it's like, okay. And then right. you're not being as coy with your stupid being elite YouTube channel. And slowly hiding things in there that are jabs to the WWE as well. Even though you guys make fun of yourselves and jab at each other. But sometimes when you know the WWE is doing things to you on purpose. And you come back with your own stupidity about t-shirts. And that they can't be worn at certain places. And you make a stupid mockery out of it on your own YouTube channel. You look just as stupid and desperate as they do. Yeah. WWE is petty. WWE will do things where it's like, are we serious? I may be getting myself into some trouble by saying this. I still feel like they overreacted on the whole Hulk Hogan thing. The racial scandal. It was wrong. And maybe you should have been like, hey, Hogan, just for about a year, just off to the side you go. Like, we're not going to be acquainted with you. But don't erase the guy. He made a mistake. Okay. We all have. We all say things behind closed doors. Doesn't mean that you remove the guy. So You can't erase history that's already made, that's already written. And you can't judge someone on a bad choice they made. So you're going to tell me that the ultimate warrior beating Hulk Hogan never happened. You're going to tell me him beating Sergeant Slaughter never happened. You're going to tell me Andre the Giant did a front flip at WrestleMania 3. You're going to tell me that... Holland Nash had an invisible guy as the third man. Cena was around back then? Apparently, because he never existed. But like, do you see where we're going with this? So I don't want anyone to feel like, oh, look at them. They they you know they scold WWE religiously and now here they are like no, we're not saying WWE is a saint. We're just saying that just let don't it Don't be go. the martyr. Let go of the jabs. Be like Putting, focusing your energy on how do we take a jab at them could be channeled into, let's put a focus on how we can build our next pay-per-view, how we can build our next feud. How we can even get like a more challenging like thing going on in regards to our competitors. How we can get better promotion now. Because honestly, what I'm seeing right now, oh, we have this weekly event finally starting. Get ready to be there in... Where, where is it? And DC is their first event? Then I Philly? Think so. I it think seems so. like every week they're going to start promoting the following week. 
as the biggest thing, it's like, no, it's going to become a TV show. Even WWE stopped with that crap. They're like, oh, we have these events coming along. Be sure to check Ticketmaster or your local yeah. ticket provider of where you can get to the next show. You guys are literally putting so much focus on a weekly show that hasn't even started yet. And you're making it seem like it's a pay-per-view. I've said it before. Time will tell come October when they start producing on a weekly basis and then we will talk. In the meantime, this episode was intended for us to kind of get our sentiments out there, for us to get you know a lot of stuff off our chest. Because when I saw that, I was a bit... Not that I was fuming or that I was, you know, angry beyond belief, but I just felt like, you know what, don't be a hypocrite. Like, don't, don't do something and then, t- and then tell everyone, I didn't, I didn't really do that. But knowing that you did it and everyone else knows that you did it. Um, so, yeah, that's just my sentiments on it. Do you have anything, any closing remarks to say? No, just, again... You know you're better than certain things. Don't don't be the demise of your own thing. Yeah. That's where I leave it at. So, there you go, guys. Kind of a little bit more of a serious episode, a little bit more of a heated episode. But that's just our sentiments about what was said and what's been done. Uh, let us know how you guys feel in the comment section below. Thank you so much for listening, and we will see you all next time.